amici di underradiorock.com ho l'onore e il piacere di essere qui con Zoltan Bathory chitarrista fondatore dei Five Finger Death Punch so Zoltan how are you? very good, exactly what he said <laughs> I said uh, it's my pleasure and honor being here with Mr. Zoltan Bathory guitarist and founder of Five Finger Death Punch Yeah, uh, Zoltan, we can we have a little thing to tell you at first because we like to define your last record crashing because he actually made a crash car by when he was listening. <laughs> <laughs> he was, he was yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was too loud, you know. He was like there, that's great, I'll do the great. <laughs> and he went on straight on a fireman truck. So. Wow, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But he's alive, so they could still have the fire right away. Yeah. <laughs> One month ago. Uh, if I'm right, uh, Cradle to the Grave came out as single here mm-hmm. in Europe, Italy, or whatever. But in America, we have House of the Rising Sun rolling on radio station and all. So, uh, why this uh, difference? Do you, do you find the audience is different, is different between America and Europe? Or, uh... um, well, basically, American radio have some standards that they don't play heavy songs, you know? Ah. So, it's just simply centered. Okay. You know, like, they, there's a certain level, like, you know, we are probably the heaviest band on radio, yeah. you know? Like, Slipknot has a couple of songs that, you know, make it to radio, Metallica had some songs that make it to radio, but everything heavier, just simply doesn't get no. played. So, you know, so when you, they look at the record and they tell you, like, okay, from these, you know, we have 20 something songs, five of them maybe fit. fit in the, or, you know, yeah, yeah. So basically, it's just simply the radio just doesn't play heavy songs. and. We have, you know, smaller stations, underground stations of wood. Like we do, like, yeah, uh, like us. Yeah, and then, yeah. And then satellite radio would play the heavy stuff, but, you know. And Europe has less of a censorship, so we can give you guys heavy songs, and, you know. And it's an interesting thing, because here, you know, a lot of people look at us like, oh, that's a heavy band in America. Uh, we have a lot of fans, but, but people are not necessarily fan of the band and don't know much about us. Mm-hmm. They only know us from the radio, so they don't actually know that you know, we have a <laughs> pretty heavy record. You know? All right, all right. So, uh, this is the second time we made Five Finger Death Punch. Uh, the first one was maybe even the first you came in Italy mm-hmm. uh, the, in, uh, in November. We spoke with Jason, it was nice mm-hmm. chat uh, available on our. our YouTube channel, we streamed, a lot of people heard it, but we had a lot of people to thank, you know. Um, and you were supporting Avenged Sevenfold, tonight you are the headlining band, and you've got, you've got guys supporting you, so how does it feel? Well, you know, it's, um, when it's your show, it's, it's, it's mostly your audience, you know what I mean? So it's always, um, every show that your show, it's, it's, it's kind of a, a trade-up. When you play with another band and you play a festival, you're exposed to people that maybe wouldn't come out and see you. Yeah. So you get to gather more fans, you know, people who never heard of you or didn't know much about you got to see you and say, oh, maybe I like this band, you know. When it's your show, it's all your fans. Mm-hmm. So it's more intimate, they know the lyrics and you know, they come to see you and only you, you know, so it's, it's a, both have its own, you know, right. own, uh, thing that, you know, cool about. So we had a couple of records that um, almost uh, came out together from you guys. Wrong side of heaven, righteous yeah. side, oh, hell, <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, Long title. <laughs> yeah. Basically, they are really strong, they are cool. Uh, which one satisfies you the most? Well, when we wrote these songs, we wrote them all together. Yeah. So we didn't write it as a record one and record two. We wrote a bunch of songs, and once we had the songs done, yeah. that's when we started to decide which one gonna be the first and which one will be the second. So, and <clears throat> that was basically the idea. That was the incentive that we wanted to separate the songs yeah. in a way that I can pick a favorite record. Ah, okay. That was the goal. Uh, if, yeah. if I favor one of the records, then then it's the not the right. Okay. Split. So. With, with that said, um, the second one feels a little bit heavier, maybe a little bit darker, you know, than the than the first one. Yeah. Doesn't mean that I prefer that, but but it just feeling wise, maybe it became a little bit darker than the first. But 
it's to me it's equal. That's what yeah. we wanted to do. That is interesting because uh, speaking with Jason last time, he said maybe uh, the first one comes off with more anger because mm -hmm. you've got stuff like burn motherfucker or mm -hmm. you, and the second one maybe more intimate uh, than you know. Uh, lyrics are all written by Ivan, if I'm yeah. right, so maybe it will be, you know, one hour here explaining everything about it and all, but yes, um, and uh, we know you are uh, one of the main... Uh, one of the main songwriters in the band and uh, uh, in, your, in your music we can hear a lot uh, of uh, uh, a classic metal root even if you have an extremely modern and groovy metal you can still hear something from a classic band so uh, I would like to know who is the guy who brings this Well, it's uh, if you if you try to split it up, pretty much I'm you know I grew up in Europe, so I have all the European man yeah. bands, that my influences. So, so you definitely hear that. That's what it is. I have that that Euro influence in the band, and then Jason is more of the rock, you know, the metal guy. Jason is yeah. more of a rock guy. He's like into the Von Halens and you know yeah. and those bands. He's a shredder. And, yeah, but he's yeah. And um, but even our yeah. solos, like he's the way he plays is totally different. I play more of a game classical bass, you know, okay. or more, more in that direction. And uh, but that's that's what makes the band, uh, in my opinion, versatile. That when you put together these people, you know, um, you have a couple of American guys. They they're very groove and American metal bass, yeah. you know, way how they play. And then I'm European and I have a lot of influence in bringing from here yeah you know and the combination of that makes this band sound a little bit more international maybe so we are in between so if you're European you know it's, you, you can tell it's an American band but yeah you do you hear the Euro influences while Americans listen to it for them it's like yeah it's American metal but it's a little bit different because yeah. they feel the Euro stuff especially in the volume 2 for example to me if you listen to the beginning of uh, Wrecking Ball there is this sort of You know, it reminds me of Sweden, Dark Tranquility mm -hmm. stuff, mm -hmm. and that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, Let I, me see. I listen to that stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. absolutely. Good that. So, uh, let's talk a little bit about, you know, <clears throat> uh, Zoltan the, the man. Because we read, you sleep three hours per night. Because mm -hmm. time is the only thing you can have back, yeah. basically. Yeah. That's pretty much what we do also by running our radio station. Uh, we do, we spend a lot of time in there and uh, so I wanted to know what takes you away from sleeping besides Five Finger, five finger Death Punch. Well, it's a, I, I have kind of a bucket list, you know, bucket list meaning the things that I have to do you know, okay. in life, you know, and, and we all know that time doesn't come back to you, so whatever you do, in your life and in your days, it's, it's you've done it and you've done it, if you didn't, you die or you know, you, you go yeah, without, without having done that. Yeah. So, so for me, it's I'm trying to fill it, fill up every minute with something. Um, mm. and I have a lot of interest too, like you know, I do, I do love martial arts, right? Yeah, so I train a lot, I, I train jiu jitsu, judo, some muay thai, some kung fu, you know. I do that. I fly airplanes. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a pilot in the making. Um, drive boats, fast cars, yeah. whatever it is that you know what I mean. <laughs> I, I, I rent a fighter jet time to time to just you know just to be you know crazy about it. And uh, they let me fly, so you can they pick you up. Yeah. And then and then the pilot will tell you like okay, you, you call, can drive. You have you can <laughs> you have control over the aircraft. But you can do whatever you want as long as you tell me before you're gonna do it. So that's the deal, right? Okay. So then I can, you know, and I made myself sick. You know, I, mean, I, yeah. I pushed it to the point like, okay, that's enough. You know? So speaking about uh, martial, uh, uh -huh. martial arts, uh, we do also both study and practice uh -huh. martial okay. arts. Um, he's a judoka. Oh, nice. He's yeah. a black belt in uh, first degree in judo. I study and practice uh, traditional karate Shotokan okay. and I'm also a black belt in first degree, I'm studying for the second. So we know the strong mental education and approach that martial arts give you. 
I wanted to know from you, how does that uh, affect your work, your life in the, you know, you travel a lot, you're constantly in tour, so how does this affect all the people you meet and... and I mean, you know, especially like, you know, he's a black belt in judo, or, yeah. you know, actually I have a black belt in judo too. It's, uh, you know, it's, by the, some martial arts, to be a martial artist is a huge difference between somebody who can fight, somebody who's a brawler. If you go, yeah. like, somebody fights in a bar, yeah. but that doesn't make you a martial artist, you're just a fighter, right? Yeah. You're just somebody who's brawl. To be a martial artist, especially by the time you're a black belt, you know, you go to, uh, you go to your, a, a mental process as well, so a psychological uh, um, development, right? Yes. You can't be a black belt where you have students that are not there yet, they're all looking up at, at you, you know? So you can, you know, you have to be as an example, you know? Yeah. It's like you're, you're, you're a black belt in that martial arts school and all the kids are looking at you, you can't, you know, you can't even park your car the wrong way because they will see that, you know? So you have to be an example for this kid. So I have yeah. a sudden subconscious and some sort of a, some sort of a, a responsibility yes. builds up in you that, hey, I have to be responsible. Also, when you train, you realize that when you start out, everybody beats your ass, right? But then you become the black belt. Now you can beat anybody and you have to have the self-restraint and understanding like, yeah, it could hurt you, but that's not, not the point. Our point is that we train and we study and I'll show you techniques and, you know, and so all this both physical and mental responsibility will be adopted and that shapes your product. So wherever you go, now wherever you both of you go, you are a martial artist, you're a black belt, you have to act that way, right? So it kind of carries with you your The way you walk, the way you talk, it's all yes. gonna be in there. You became you. You didn't just get a black belt from you know Amazon as a present or a, I mean, as a present. Yeah. Or was, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's it, you earned it, and and I think that obviously you have to be disciplined to earn that. You know, you have to go and train, and you know that alone means about strong character because you have to do all those things. It takes long years to do that. So when you combine all this, you, that's who you are. Yeah. And it will affect everything you do and you're going to have this methodical way of thinking and, and, and also martial arts are, when you're talking about not fighting, you're talking about martial arts, it's also a strategy, it's a chess game. We do judo, I'm watching what you're doing, you know, and, and, and I'm calculating and you're calculating, it's a chess game. If you do this, I do that, right? Mm -hmm. So when we play this chess game, you, you learn to be strategic, you learn to be patient, you learn to to understand when to make a move and why. And that also spills over into your, the rest of your life. So when anything you do, any kind of business, anything in life, even just how to get a girl, you're going to be strategic. You're going to play your little <laughs> chess game, right? That's how you become. You become a strategist. You become a politician. You become a, um, you know, a, a respectable man. And, and other people can feel that. So it does affect everything in your whole life. You become a martial artist. That's who you are. So because, you know, I play guitar, but I'm a martial artist. You know, you do interviews, but you're a martial artist. That will be always the background to whatever you do. Because yes. you approach everything that way. You approach, you dare to win, first and foremost. You know, you're competitive, you, you, you dare to win it. And you're strategic, you're methodical, you're logical. And you have to be an example, so you will act like a man. Because there's also the respect of your opponent, and these are those are basically things that we wanted to be said by a great martial artist like you. Because we've read everything about you know Wikipedia, what you achieved in martial arts. Because a lot of people um, <clears throat> think that martial artists like you did in the beginning. Um, people who fight, people brawlers, or you know, there's still this way to think. So we took the chance to speak with you to say also that to just not speak about news. Mm -hmm. We thought that was important, and for us it is important. And uh, yes, but uh, I would like to go back to music mm -hmm. because uh, we read you're also a co-producer. I mean. You co-produce uh, most of your records, right? Mm -hmm. So as a producer, which is the band you would love to work with? Hmm, I never really thought of that, actually. No. Um, 
because you know production is a producing records you know it's a that's that's a big word you know it, it, it actually have many different meanings what does it really mean to produce a producer band a producer has to be very close to the band you know a producer has to be somebody that's why it's a hard thing to answer because obviously there are a lot of bands I love you know there are so many bands like oh my god I love that band I love that I wish I wrote that song but you know what I mean there are all those bands out there but for you to produce a band you have to be almost a band you, all, okay. you have to be so close to the band like a you know, like, I don't know, Bob Rock produces Metallica. Yes. You know, he has to be so close to those guys to understand everything because you don't want to change anything. You want to you wanna bring out the best from the band and for that you really have to know them and understand where they go. So when we co produce a record, that really means that um, us, I think at that point, goes in the studio with a very solid idea. We know what we want. We know how we sound like. We know who we are. We know the boundaries that, okay, I want to cross. Yeah, I love, let's say I love Slayer, right? And I love all the heavy bands from Demon Warrior to, you know, like or even extreme metal bands. And at the same time, I listen to Scorpions and Accept and all those stuff, right? And, and Five Finger Nails and falls somewhere in between those, you know? And then, but, so you have a, a sound and we are, we are kind of a band that has a pretty wide range. But even then, there are certain things that just doesn't fit. You know, even though I love that stuff, but it just doesn't fit. You have to understand where you are, who you are, and you have to keep the band in that pocket, so to speak. And and that's what the producer have to understand, like how far is too far. You know, you can't spread it too wide because you lose people. You know, you can you, know, you you have to have a sound, and then and then within that sound that you have, you have to then it comes into the song. And then the producer basically job is to bring out the best possible songs, the best possible way of communication. Because sometimes you have a song that is really catchy, sometimes you have a song that has a vibe. But it's not necessarily maybe melodic, but it's just something about it, you know? Those magical moments. That's the producer's job to find those magical moments and and use those and emphasize them. If I give you a musical example, for example. Musical example, for example. Uh, I can play your guitar riff yeah. and put a drum beat on it. And I'm gonna put a drum beat on it that has a little bit of rushing, just a little bit. But snare, push it a little bit. It will give you a feeling of anxiety. Like, it kind of works you off. I play the same guitar riff and I put very straight drums on it that's exactly on time, very square. Yeah. You're gonna have a feeling almost like very military, very military, very almost German, you know, just go, right? Power metal. And then you Power put, metal is like more. Yeah, right? <laughs> and then and then they put a drum beat on it that's a little bit kind of lazy, and out of a sudden it's almost bluesy and groovy, right? And so the same exact guitar, I gave you three different feelings. So you have to understand how to do this with music. So when you're putting songs together, you have to paint a picture, let's say I'm going to put a verse, the first part of the song, I'm going to be very anx anxious, fast, and pushing the beat. And then when it comes to the chorus, I may move the beat into that groovy, slow thing, and it could, as I said, it could be the same guitar actually, and it will give you a feeling of release. So I didn't even say a word yet, the vocalist didn't even sing yet, but you already have feelings from the music. That's your job, to find those things and put it together and, and speak to the audience and make the connection. And uh, it's the only way to do that if you're close to the band. And right now, I mean, this is this is us, this is our band. So it's easy for me to produce this band. Okay. For another band to produce somebody else, I mean, I would have to really connect connect to the guys, you know? Because as, as far as like bands, I fucking love a lot of bands, you know what I mean? But then maybe we'll take you too much time away from Five Finger the Punch because you, we know you are constantly touring during the year. Mm -hmm. So, and... But you know what, tell you, if I want to expand on that, actually, I would say like there are a lot of bands out there that I can hear that musically they're great musicians and I'm like, man, if I can put my hands on this, you know? Like so many times there are bands that I hear that... Like, they, I would have done that. I yeah, would have they're done very and, and because because so many times their technical proficiency is um, don't listen to me. 
<laughs> We're talking here. Same thing. Right? Same thing happened with Jay. Yeah? Same thing happened totally with Jay. Yeah. <laughs> totally same thing. Again. So so many times like I hear a band that is musically great, right? And they yeah. then and maybe too young or maybe they just don't they understand yet that the song is very important. So yeah, maybe you can put 15 different guitar riffs in a song. It's not really a song yet because maybe it's too many. So sometimes I hear bands and I'm like, man, if I could, I would Same take out this part, I would take that part out, make the song a little bit shorter, then I would be the song. Then you get to the point. Yeah. Okay. So we have a last question, a funny question. Okay. So imagine. <laughs> and then we do judo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can. Yeah, I'm actually a karateka, so I can watch. Four months, four <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, basically, imagine you could pick one of those uh, martial artist movie star at the top of their ability and fight against one of them. Uh, Steven Seagal, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Chuck Norris, Jet Li, Jackie Chan, Bruce Lee. Who would you pick? And do I, am I trying to win? If I'm trying to win, okay, if I'm trying to win... Well, Chuck Norris, you can't beat Chuck Norris. No, of course. If he looks at you, he's dead. We know that. I mean, Jet Li. I love Jet Li. Jet Li, I mean, like, look, it will be an honor to fight any of these guys. Steven Seagal is a big dude, you know what I mean? Um, and he moves you just with the hand, like... It would happen. And you find yourself like, oh, Bruce Lee, you don't have a chance, you know what I mean? It's like, I would have to go for Jean-Claude Van Damme, because he's because I'm a grappler. Yeah. So if he doesn't kick my head off right away and I grab him, stuck. Then it's judo and jiu-jitsu all the yeah. way, right? Yeah. So I would have to go for if I have to win. But you have to get the distance. Yeah. You, you yeah, have yeah, yeah. to I get close, close to him. Yeah, yeah. So so I would say Jet Li, Jet Li and, and Jean Claude Van Damme from those two because they're primarily strikers. I can defend myself enough to get close. You know, we are judo guys, you know what happens. Uh, Once yeah. I have a grab on you, uh, yeah. Yeah. it's we, we collecting frequent flyer miles right there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You always say that, you judo guys. Yeah. You always say that. We, 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 we throw people. But yeah, it's any of those would be another. Steven Seagal is big. Yeah. <laughs> so Zoltan, we are done. Uh, thank you for being such a gentleman. And uh, we ask you one last favor, if you can greet the listeners of underradiorock.com. All right. Hey guys, this is Zoltan Battery from Fighting and Death Punch, and you're listening to underradiorock.com. Yeah, thanks. That's it? That's, That's it. it. What up guys, Chris Kale from Five Finger Death Punch. To all my Italian fans out there, fans of Five Finger Death Punch, hello. You're not out here, you're missing it, it's getting crazy. Look at all these people out here, having a good time. You could have hung out in the front of the line and talked to me. You stayed home. Thank you. <laughs>